Hey everyone, this is Joe Barnard here to talk to you about Sprite. I've got the vehicle outside, and while it's not booted up, we are connected directly to the IMU. You can see it's unplugged from the craft, and we've got a cable running from the IMU directly to a computer. So let's take a look at that. All right, what we're looking at here is the VectorNav Control Center. I'm going to plug in the VN300 IMU. We'll connect to the device. Um, this is basically a super simple GUI that VectorNav has provided. Um, Sprite is not actually on, we're, we're just connected directly to the IMU and nothing else. So what we're doing here is testing out the GPS in outdoor conditions. The sky is, is uh, cloudy, but it's, it's clear and easy for these GPS receivers to um, get a signal outside right now. So we're looking at a bunch of stuff about the sensor status. Um, We've got uh, all of the GNSS satellites that are being used. This is GNSS, so it's not just GPS, it's uh, Galileo. It's, uh, oh man, uh, GLONASS is, is there too, but you know, several countries have these satellites, so we can already see we're connected to seven of them, um, and basically things are starting up. Now the GNSS compass compares the dual GPS on the device. Um, and that means we can basically use that to get a heading measurement or increase the accuracy of our roll on the vehicle or uh, roll orientation. You can also see things are sort of starting to converge over here. This is um, a heavily filtered signal in a good way, um, but this is our attitude. Um, and then the uncertainty you can see goes down as the filter sort of converges on a uh, solution. So we are almost uh, done with the status here. Now there's our longitude, longitude, latitude, and altitude. I'm <laughs> blurring those out right now because I don't want to broadcast where I live. Um, okay, so you can see our satellites are increasing now. We're in mode one aligning. Um, I'm not an expert at this, so I actually don't know what the aligning portion is, but it takes about two minutes. And now we've reached mode two tracking. Um, so there's no GPS compass aiding. I'm basically just reading what's on the screen. Um, things sort of go in and out. The estimates on velocity, um, attitude, position, these are all uncertainties that are basically calculated within the filter. You can also see the yaw or the roll on the vehicles uh, just went from probably negative 180 to positive 180. That's a pretty normal thing. Um, the other thing that I've been looking at here is the actual latitude and longitude over time. So this gives me an estimated sort of circular error of probability or CEP. Um, and that's, you know, how accurate are these GPS measurements. Um, it's much better when it's outside than when it's just trying to peer through a window inside. And again, I don't actually have the street map pulled up because not trying to broadcast my location. Coming inside here, we've got our two GNSS antennas. This is one right here, and then we've got one on the opposite position of the craft. We also have an XB Pro S1 radio that's broadcasting our data from the craft to the ground station. This radio was actually used in an old wireless launch pad system. So I also have a pad remote. Now that they're synced up, you can see it says standby there. The next step here is to check our connections. We have three different computers running in the system, the remote, the launch pad, and the rocket, and we need to make sure that all of them are communicating reliably. We can check this with a quick turn of a key. Okay, so it works. Uh, this may not look like much, but what's actually going on is there's a wireless transmission between the pad remote and the pad computer, and the pad computer converts it to a separate protocol, sends it up to the launch tower, which communicates via a hardwire connection to the rocket. Moving down here, you can see the XB is connected to the Sprite flight computer via a serial connection. The TX and RX are right there. Uh, so let's take a look at what type of telemetry we're getting. I'll bring the craft back outside and then we will boot it up. Back inside again, we will now plug in the ground station and then open up a serial terminal using VS code to see what we're getting from the craft. This is a big scary block of text. Uh, also, hello, thanks for waving past Joey B. This is a big scary block of text that is the raw telemetry coming in from the craft. It is all ASCII text, so you can see the header right there, SPRT underscore TLM. Um, and then a bunch of different sensor measurements. We've got accelerometers, orientation, there's our GPS coordinates that I'm blurring. Um, we also have TVC outputs and a few other things. So let's take a look at them specifically. To make things easier, I'm going to pause the video and zoom in here on these two numbers, three and 13. 
Three represents the dimensions of the GPS fix. This can be two or 3D, so two-dimensional is just horizontal dimensions, no vertical component, and three, which is what we have, includes an altitude measurement. And then 13 is the number of satellites that we can see with the craft. The vehicle had just recently been started up when I recorded this footage, so you'll see that 13 change to a 14 and then a 15 as we start to acquire more satellites. Moving back to the beginning of the message here, you'll see that each message is broken up every two seconds or so by a 38 rank of <laughs> XB signal. Uh, that should just say strength of XB signal. There's a little bit of formatting there, but that is the strength of the wireless connection measured in decibels. If you look a little bit closer at the actual telemetry after the TLM colon, you have 0 0.77, 0 0.25, 9.77. These are three axis accelerometer measurements. Moving over, you've got the gyroscopes. This is from the vector nav sensor. So they are high enough resolution that you just can't see anything, at least with two digits of precision. Obviously the craft has more than two digits of precision. And then finally, you've got the IMU temperature. That's 19.3 there, and that is temperature in Celsius. Moving toward the end of the message, we have our barometric pressure from the BMP-280. This is the 9938.83, that is in Pascals. And then we have the outside temperature, which is 14.65 Celsius. You'll notice that the outside temperature is definitely colder than the IMU, and that's because when I place the craft outside, it takes a little while for the internals of the IMU to cool down to the outside level. And the IMU just heats up on its own, so it makes sense here. Over here in the message, we have some more interesting readings, starting with the 18. If you sort of look up, you'll see 18, 5, 9, uh, 5, 17. Uh, there are a bunch of readings that don't seem to correlate super well. This is actually direct LIDAR measurements uh, from the craft to the ground, and they are in centimeters. The LIDAR is currently being pulled at a very, very slow rate and with no filtering at all. So seeing that noise on there is pretty much to be expected. Once we get a little bit of a common filter just on the LIDAR reading or some other type of filtering, um, things should smooth out with that. Then uh, moving over to the right, you've got 9.55 and 32.16. These are the two power buses on the craft. So 9.55 is the avionics bus um, and 32.16 is the propulsion bus or the fan bus. It actually looks like we've got an off by one error here with the 9.55. That should probably be closer to 8.55 instead. So that's a thing to work on. And then one more time, going back to the beginning of the signal, um, just to demonstrate some more stuff, I moved the craft inside and then recorded the screen again. Um, so now we've gone from 30 something decibels to 24. This is how the decibel scale works. Lower values are better. Anyway, just wanted to demonstrate that. Uh, hi, it's the end of the video, Joey B. Uh, I need some feedback here. So I have this huge chunk of ASCII data that I can parse through and get all of these values from the craft on the ground. But I need a way to display this uh, that makes sense. So when I live stream these tests, we need to be able to look at all of this data at the same time in a way that is comprehensive and not just a block of text. Currently, I'm looking at NASA's OpenMCT and Ball Aerospace's Cosmos app. Um, I don't have a whole lot of requirements. I just need a lot of plotting functionality for live tele uh, telemetry coming in. And then I need a little bit of functionality for sending a couple messages back out. So TX and RX in the same app, it's all just ASCII serial data. It should be super simple to parse. If you have suggestions for that, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm working with the generous BPS patrons in the BPS Discord. Um, to develop a 3D simulation, uh, so, or a 3D uh, live visual visualization of the craft um, so that we can have some basically fake or real life Kerbal Space Program while we're actually flying this thing uh, via the telemetry. I hope this all makes sense. I've had a little bit too much coffee today, so hopefully this conveys. Uh, anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. May, uh, may your skies be blue and your winds be low. I can't keep forgetting that. Oh my gosh.